I'll let you know when it pops up. Yep, it's gone. All right. Oh God. Oh no. Let's create our own. <laughs> yeah, you want to do that? Okay, so <laughs> wait, is it live? It's not live. Yeah, yeah, it's no, live. It's, it's live. Okay, oh, so raw brain power. It's okay, so Disco Elysium has four attributes, as you can see here. Yes. Intellect to use classic D and D terminology. Yeah, int intelligence. Yeah. Is basically is intelligence. Um, psyche is base kind of sort of but not really a mix. It's like wisdom, wisdom and charisma. Yeah. Wisdom and charisma. Uh, physique, physique, I'm guessing, is toughness and strength. Strength and constitution. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. And motorix is your dexterity. Right. So, for just for now, just for now, I'm gonna say set them to like four three three two on any of them. Like for now, we'll go to the next page and then come back. I just want to show you guys the skills real quick. Okay, so talk through the attributes. Well, my ass in real life is a weak boy. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like my first playthrough, I did uh four five one two. But for now, but just for... However, I've uh, been told I can read people well, so... <laughs> Alright, so we'll, we'll we'll look at this and we'll come back in a second when we when we find out some more oh, stuff. Okay. Lord. So here are your skills. Interesting. Before you do, before you do anything. So basically, um, your attribute level sets your starting level in of those, those skills, categories. Yeah. Yes. And it also sets your level cap for leveling up those skills. Right. So all your that. intellect, intellect skills can go up by three, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Now, right now, the page is asking you to select your signature skill. When you pick your signature skill, it will start one level higher, and it will also increase the level cap of all those attributes skills by one. Right. So if you were to pick endurance as your signature skill, it would start at level three. And, you'd, and have, you'd be able to level it up one more time. And you'd be able to level up all of your physique skills. Oh, I see. Times. All of them. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we're going, are we going by real life? <laughs> That's what I did. You can do whatever the hell you want, man. Pain threshold. <laughs> no. Uh, what in the hell is half light? Half light is literally your fight or flight response. Uh, can I click right. these to read about them? or? Yes, you can. So what these skills, these skills are the aspects of your character's personality. These are uh, all the different voices in your brain that tell you your thoughts. Right. If you click on info on the upper right of the uh, portrait over on the right side. No, no. Yeah. Oh, the, no, look top over right. right. Top right where it says overview info under signatures. There you go. Oh. <laughs> cool for cops, cop aficionados. Sociopaths. Sociopaths. <laughs> yeah, so... We well, could, yeah, that makes sense for suggestion. We could go through and just Experts read. Experts of psychological warfare. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes, we could go in through and read each and every one of these, if you want, in detail. But uh, or we could do the, fanciers. or or we could do Massachusetts. Like, All right, pain guys threshold. Who, guys who won't die. Pain threshold. Yeah. Okay. Pain threshold for me. Okay. So the um, basically the rundown is. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Before you confirm mm -hmm. anything, what's really interesting about this game, and that these skill descriptions touch on, is that. All of these skills... You no, know, I don't want to become famous! Okay. <laughs> when Generally, when you play an RPG, you just want to level your skills up and up and up. Yeah, In yeah. this game, most of these skills, not all of them, but most of them, will become actively detrimental to you if they are leveled up too high. Right, because they're they're you're basically they're, they're parts of your psyche. Yes. Yeah, so like if you become like too much of a pain junkie, you just you're just like, I no, give it to me more, more, hurt yes. me more. Yes, and if you're like, so like the way that so there is a real time component to this game, right? Where 
time will progress based on like the number of clicks you make in a conversation. Right, yeah. And encyclopedia, your encyclopedia skill is it, your- It increases the amount of clicks you have to make because you keep saying shit. Because you, your brain keeps telling you useless trivia. Right. Yes. However, encyclopedia will help you learn more world building shit. Yeah. And it's a great skill to have on a first playthrough. Right. Well, we're going to go pain threshold. There we go. <laughs> All <laughs> right, ladies choice. and gentlemen, here we go. All right. In the land of watercolors, in the land of 1995. The far future year of 1995. The, the theories are at home in the mirror. It is their address. Even the clearest water, if deep enough, can drown. R.S. Thomas. Also, apparently, uh, Red, this game has a shit ton of dialogue, so we don't I, have I'm to well, read a lot. I, I've heard, yes, I'm well aware. <laughs> Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No love. I forgot about this. Grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. <laughs> Ne never, never, ever, ever, ever? <laughs> never, ever, ever, baby. Okay. <laughs> An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. <laughs> <laughs> Was that about the ex something? An awareness creeps up on you. The limbic system. <laughs> Acidic sauce. Sauce. Give me the sauce. I'll get the sauce for you, Danny. No, I want to know about my ex something. Wait, wait, before you do. Oh, okay. Extenderness. <laughs> it is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of allergic zone. Real quick, yep. I just want to point out, I'm 95% sure that these two voices you're hearing are the same voice actor. Yeah, I'm pretty, I think they are. All right, well, fuck it. No one sees. Never let me go. All right. Nothing <laughs> down to fuck all bar. <laughs> Yeah, there's who gives a shit. Not you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal are over. <laughs> Wait, no, I need to belittle myself. Do you really? <laughs> I did. Sure, I do. Let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why did you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sense yourself marinating? Poured so much on yourself. Got a bit carried away, didn't you, Chef? You fear an apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. Oh. <laughs> you just passed a passive check. Okay. I don't what care. Is no, what is that? Also, also a giant uh, boar there. <laughs> and the evil apes are juking it out on the board. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant board. Real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me point out about your skills, your various like thoughts and parts of your psyche. Uh -huh. They will chime in to tell you what they think is the best course yeah. of action. I don't have to take me. their advice, I know. You you don't have to take their advice because they are not always right. <laughs> How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're joking it out. It's that large. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. What's the joking it out? Trying for resources. It's just a stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. 
to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. Let's go. I told you Disco wasn't dead. Yeah, that's true. You're a champion. Volition. What is volition again? Your mental health. Oh, I see. I <laughs> am a champion. Because I had attached to my neck. And Fuck I it, no, I am a champion. Yeah. The stench of nickel rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. <laughs> Cut my head off, it's trying to murder the Who am of I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? <laughs> a fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. But the sound I want you guys to remember this sound. I'll try to remember that, yeah. Also, don't worry. He's wearing underwear. I, I see can tell. So if you hold tab, I believe, it will highlight everything you can interact with. Pants. Click that button, that, that pulsing yellow button. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your clear-cut pants. Fish him out. It says whirling in rack on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. I like that perception is is just raw facts. And if you hold tab rope two chemical switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached horrific. to one of the blades. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? <laughs> you feel as though this creature is your friend. The Inland Empire. Itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together. Yeah, pull on the fan. The what is that? What? Come squeaking to a halt. It so this white... The so you see number one is highlighted in white. Uh -huh. Turn the lights off immediately. You can practically feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Burn, bring it on! Eyes burn with photosensitivity. <laughs> it's not good. So what, what what were you saying about the white thing? I was saying, Sam, if you bring this, that back, that yeah, hit continue. Has it been so this white as option as is a white check. White checks are skill checks that if you fail, you can take them again if you level that skill up or find something which gives you a modifier. Uh, so for example, for example, because Sam turned off the uh, the fan, it increases his chance of success. Right. And if he had failed... Warning, warning. The necktie is no longer contained. <laughs> if, if he had failed... I'm just going to tell you now, if he had failed that check, he would have lost a piece of health. And because he has only one piece left, he would have died of a heart attack right here. <laughs> I see that. Fantastically colorful tie with Are you shitting me? Patterns. Nope. I started this game on my first playthrough with one bar of health because I had my physique at one. If I had failed that check or anything, you would have just died instantly. I would have just died instantly. Disco ass blazer. Gotta pick up the bottle. This magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. So if you hold tab, you notice that one of those. See how it's outlined in yellow? Yeah. That means you only notice it because your perception is high enough yeah. to notice it. Ah. Okay.
Where's my other shoe? Find it. <laughs> That's for you to find out. Looks like someone tore at the tape when the song was playing. Real, real tape player still on. Rolling empty. You see bottles in the bathtub. Oh, Wine, shit. beer, and sweet liqueurs. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. <laughs> Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself. Just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the fate that awaits you there. <laughs> Notice your character portrait in the lower Yeah, I saw that. It's screen. fucking freakish. Wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there. And you will never unbecome it. Also, your inland empire is the part of your psyche that experiences hunches. Yeah. Gut feel. Maybe I should touch it first. There's yeah. something wrong with my face. There's definitely something wrong with it. What's wrong? Where to even begin? <laughs> there's the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm sorry. Bet you are. <laughs> your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. At least my tongue's okay. It's not. It's swollen <laughs> and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Wipe the mirror. Behold. <laughs> it is an it is an expression of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I just I have only seen this image with the subtitle it is an expression of pain. I'm a superstar. It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? I think it might be because I'm a superstar. Please stop. <laughs> it's horrible. You're scared. No, <laughs> no, no this, this is what superstars, what superstars do. do. <laughs> It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? Superstardom. Wait, look at the options. Look at all of them. I don't know. It's indescribable. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. I'm, I'm insinuating that I'm vaguely sympathetic. Yeah, no. There's some charm to it. <laughs> it's a sad as me. Ten years ago. Option six was it's an expression of pain. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> It's an expression of pain. Wow. And if you pick it, if you pick it, the game master narrator just says, "You're right. <laughs> You're right." Uh, Let the mirror be. Yeah. Also, much in the vein of Dark Souls, your uh, clothing items have uh, stats. Descriptions. I saw. Yeah. Oh, descriptions. Yes. Down there at the bag. Yeah under clothes or you could also look at items these there used to be on. a tape in this case but it was destroyed in a fit of rage something about the ten years single smallest church in san 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 uh must have rubbed someone the wrong way the label says the song was recorded in 43 so Click yeah it. my next tag is me inland empire esprit de corps, esprit de corps. Like disco ass blazer I get less suggestion, but more conceptualization of my shirt, and more and less savoir faire, and more electrochemistry. And then the shoe? Nothing on the shoe. Well, you also didn't click them. They had a description. Oh, they didn't. If you go to the right, click clothes. Oh, okay. So actually, yeah, I click maybe, on the items maybe, maybe maybe you could drag them. Oh yeah, there we go. This green crocodile leather shoe has a high heel and chrome embellishments. It fits your left foot perfectly. Now all that remains <laughs> is to find the other shoe. You you should read the pants. Oh no. Oh yes. 
<laughs> oh, I can move with WASD. Yes, you can. Pants, pants, pants. These golden brown trousers are flare cut. Normal bell bottom trousers would be boot cut, but these are far from normal. They're <laughs> someone's piss soaked, cum stained party pants. <laughs> nice. Where's my shoe? Well, there was a door in, in the bathroom. I couldn't open it. No, you couldn't? I kept trying. If you look to your left, there's a. I'll give you a hint to your left. Um, southwest. Ah. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Oh, fuck. <laughs> A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor. Says the size of the impact. Back in after impact. Wait, <laughs> it is uh... too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The when you see... Shoe you found fits the hole. <laughs> Don't worry, Conley, he'll never listen to you. That's a relief. <laughs> if you see a dialogue option that has the word wait or hold on in front of, at the beginning, it is like... It doesn't it move on. Right, it does not progress the conversation, but it will give you some more information if you want okay. it. Okay, that's good to know. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still <clears> get the other one from the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. I should go get the shoe. The cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up. <laughs> I don't need it. I don't need it anymore. Find your shoe. A grand quest. Loose, 11 degrees centigrade rainfall. Oh, I thought that was a heartbeat. What was this? There's something on the table. My dog is barking. No, Max! No! no! I'm gonna have to shut the door, no! <laughs> it is an expression of pain. <laughs> okay. Sounds so like there's something table. on the counter in front of you. No, I'm not just gonna steal money. You've never picked up change off of a random door? Off a random table? No. Oh, well. I guess I might say something about me then. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to hear some of the best music in like a general town location. Nope, copyrighted. By the way, Tabal, did you or did you ever figure out what in the hell the salt curse was? Nope. Shoes. Okay. Both we'll find it later. Green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet like two baby crocodiles. How they fit? fit? Good. They're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now. Truth be told. So. You already have full yeah, morale. Yeah, I have morale. Yeah. That's your mental health. If that dips to zero, you will die. Well, not die. You don't die. You go crazy. You 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 have a mental breakdown. <laughs> you, effect game over. you effectively die. Yeah. You effectively die. It is you a game over. You, ex you experience ego death. <laughs> it is game over, regardless. Hello, officer. Hi. Hey. Uh. 
The year is 51. 2051. Is this, you know, is there a Trump Lemon? Trump Lemon. You guys can't hear my dog, right? Not nope. right now. Good, the door is working. Oh my god. Ah, uh, uh, yes. I remember this room. The lyrics, the lyrics would be. Would be. Like I Car karaoke way. mic. You should totally sing karaoke then. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People <laughs> need to know your vast oceanic soul. My soul's modest. It's normal size. <laughs> exactly. It's measured, level headed. And it needs to be heard through a PA system. By other people. <laughs> what should I say? You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. You know, I could sing as I'm happy, get the crowd going. No, no. Don't sing the happy song. It's stupid. <laughs> sing the sad song. It's profound. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. <laughs> Finish the thought. New objective. Find a sad song on tape. And I have my shoes. <laughs> Hello, sir. A man in his late 20s stands behind the counter, <clears throat> inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach... He gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was disdain in his eyes. Even now he's purposely ignoring you. Look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. That's not Something good. About it makes you feel bitter. Can I help you with that? Look, your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors. We're a man in a bomber jacket. Okay. Really, my buddy, buddy. He pretends <laughs> not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Okay, right, fine. Fuck you. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the, the surface. The menu has been the wiped clean. The only word Monday is written on it. <laughs> the soft purr of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. I don't need to go to the kitchen. Let's see. Sign reads, mess hall. Reserved for union members. Door opens at 1600. We don't need no stinking unions. What's that? An old lady. No, I mean that. It's a royal pinball machine. It's unplugged. Are you my friend? I think so. A respectable man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You, as you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. If an assault were launched on this building right now, if the wind <laughs> is coming down and the whole world descended upon you, this man would hurl himself in death's way to save you. Then he shake his hand. This, but why? Hello. I'm Kim Kisuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. This is your chance to come up with a really good name for yourself. <laughs> Get creative. Wait. Conceptualize. <laughs> a red check. <laughs> Is a check you can only attempt once. Yeah. If you fail, you fail. 50 50, here we go! Here we go! Raphael Ambrosius. Oh, oh no! Raphael Ambrosius Custo. It's so cool. You 
instinctively run your hand over your multi <laughs> horrific necktie. <laughs> the sensation of wrinkled silk somehow makes the name sound even cooler. Even classier. You should take this opportunity to start your life anew as a classier person, as Raphael Ambrosius Costo. My name is Raphael Ambrosius Costo. Yes. Well. He doesn't seem even process what you just said. Oh, come on. Just the fuck moves on, on, Jim. It looked like we had a little fiddling error on Sunday. Saturday, too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? You yeah. have? Yeah, just talk to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Not that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interview? No. Okay. We'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's escape. Have you removed the dead bodies from the tree? No. no. <laughs> the body is still in the tree. This is the first time you detect a weariness in the lieutenant's voice. It is obvious he would have preferred for the body to no longer be in the tree. Well, it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there. <laughs> what have I told you? I'm not really a police officer. <laughs> Uh, let's just join then. <laughs> Don't call me that. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? Oh, fuck. You mean you don't have a badge? <laughs> I'm a policeman and I have a badge. I was an army when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Interview the cafeteria, inspect the body, report your badge. Motherfuck, St. Jerry Oti. Hutch. Yes, all we're back. The man with the unimpressive beard notices you. That's a beard? He drops the leg. Exactly, it's unimpressive. And turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gout, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Tim Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Precinct 41. He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. <laughs> These are all so good. I'm currently in between. I'm a harbinger of ruin. <laughs> These are all so good. <laughs> <laughs> Just <coughs> nothing. Uh, for Precinct 41. No, Dead seriously, though, I am Detective Raphael Ambrosius Testo. Right. Now, I know it took us a while <laughs> to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead bodies. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works with our hair. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay, cool. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need direction. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again. If we may we may need to turn the um I didn't imply that. We may need I'll to turn, turn the voice audio up a audio tiny up. bit. Yeah. Yeah, because it's pretty quiet. I, I just checked the audio over on the uh, stream. Uh, what? It's your turn. Oh, questions. Yes, yes. He means, do you have questions for me, like a police officer would? Why did Sylvie go away? 
she went away because none of your business. Okay, fine, asshole. These are all stupid questions, that's all. <laughs> not so fast. You owe me 130 real. I don't owe you shit. That's not real currency. <laughs> the multi pattern necktie you found tied to the ceiling fan can talk. No one. It must be merely imagination. But Let fail! Time to push the eject button! Sounds like a responsibility. You don't like those. What's real? Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. He pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic accent. The IIR, or Inter Isolari Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe it. All right, money. Wow, you're a genius. I am, thank That's you. That's right, money. You owe this establishment 130 real. Who does that clown think he is? Arrest him! <laughs> what is it? What the fuck did I buy? Let's see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That's 100. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but we'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revisham. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. But what exactly is money? <laughs> Why is it there just an option that says okay? Because we don't you have any have, money. You have 130 real on you? What is money? What are you, a philosopher? I might be. <laughs> Maybe. Since I woke up, I've been having trouble money remembering the most basic concepts. To pay for things. Things like this <laughs> Interesting. Where do I get it from? I don't think I have any money. There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in of his orange bomber. That's cop four. I haven't offered to pay because I don't have any money either. What happens now? I'm sorry, but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jan Ross, right? It's not that far away. Uh... I don't, I don't remember what my home is. I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry I couldn't help more. You should take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Yeah, I know. We've been over we the shortwave thing. Fuck, man. Good luck. <sighs> what does that say? By the way, where is O? The address is coming High up. Hi, Encyclopedia. And this place sure isn't it. I don't know. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know. South? You don't really know, do you? I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? <laughs> only a vague blackened memory. A vague blackened image doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Uh... You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. So you have just unlocked a thought. Mm -hmm. Your thought cabinet is if you click the uh yo, you're here. Okay, so your thought <sighs> cabinet is like an inventory for thoughts. These thoughts I just noticed that you can see his little nervous system down there. Yes, you can. That's so cool. right now you currently have Lonesome Long Way Home uh selected but not equipped. How it works is when you equip it, you uh, you have to research it first. Uh -huh. So it says research time six hours and five minutes. That means you have to have it equipped for six hours and five minutes of in-game time. So that's basically me. It's basically you mulling it over. Well, let's head. start figuring yes. it out. Right. Okay. And while you have it equipped right now, <clears throat> you get plus one encyclopedia to all to your encyclopedia attribute. Right. 
when you complete God, the thought, these portraits. I know. <laughs> when you complete, it, it the looks thought, like Kim has been fin just finished eating someone. <laughs> <laughs> when you complete the thought, you get like the real bonus or benefit of the right, thought. Right. Right. Okay. All right. How do I get out, Batch? There's a doorway to to the southwest. Yeah. Don't mind us, ma'am. You can run by double clicking and I think holding I don't know what button you hold on the keyboard, but shift. there is a button shift, yeah. If you want to run, you can. You don't have to. But the uh So that thing right there to your south, that's Kim's car. You remember that horrible noise I told you to remember? Yeah. <laughs> right. That was his car. No. Oh. Where? It emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that toiled from oblivion. Open the door. <laughs> In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. What is this machine? <laughs> Pick up the radio. The frequency tableau lights up. And the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves <laughs> cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? What? Hello, Ali. Please <laughs> assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. <laughs> Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. You've probably done it a thousand times. Yeah. Uh. I assume it's Alice. That'd be fine. Yeah, hi, Alice. This is Officer Alice Dimitri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Can you, um... Can you get me to the 41st? Just a second, officer. Okay. She puts you on hold, the static cackling, crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear, an old man, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. A scrawny old man. Oh. cubicle, smoking. <laughs> large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. Jim 4, 41. Got urgent business. Message received. Ten five. Relay message. What's your status? Over. Just reporting in. Ten eighteen. I need to report my badge missing. My badge can't find anywhere. Basically, it's gone. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to come back when you can speak a real language to me. What does he want? <laughs> oh fuck! It's John oh, Vickmer. Oh no! Not. <laughs> Oh. My name's Dick Mullen. It's nice. Dick Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. I agree. Defend yourself immediately. They laugh at you. Authority. <laughs> Note that the third option has proceed, meaning it will continue the conversation. Uh, progress, I should say. Yeah, fa ha, ha, fuck it. I'm the first person to lose his badge. He says this uh, probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs uh, sarcastically. Oh, God damn it. Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Okay. 
Ceux de Light of Peter Vismar, is wandering to my be joking and add that this star misses the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dick does. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably just the third one. Fuck him, man. Sensor, I hear you, Peter. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me. Max, come here. You've got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. What's going on? <laughs> lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. I have other things to fucking do. The nine come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation oh, in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights <laughs> even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he lost his gun too. Wanna ask again, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> the room roars with laughter. Check your holding. Check your holding. I don't have my gun? I just want to say, his line reading of holy fuck is my favorite line reading in this whole fucking game. Holy fuck. It's gone. It's not fucking on you. Don't sweat it, Bratan. I'm never taking this tie off. You shouldn't. The tie stays on. <laughs> even the during. Tie. The tie stays on. Sir, did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. My gun's fine. Lying. Oh my god! Oh! Holy shit! Just say it like it's the truth. And then... <laughs> no, of course I didn't lose my gun. Even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Yeah, I'd hate to know that too. <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, that would really suck. And <laughs> fast. We can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We were glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. You need further assistance. Over. I'm in dire need of financial assistance. <laughs> Listen, I've actually lost my gun too. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back. You can go back on it. I know, I already wrote in my report, but... Stay on my desk for a few days. I was... I know. I know that. This might sound odd, but there's... personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, 10 4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. I need information, not fear. Be smart about Ask if he's there alone. Ten four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Let me see. In your report. Are you alone? That's a negative, sir. I got a ten twelve visitors present here. Over. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Let's wrap this up. Understood, sir. Over. Ten ten. Over. Eighteen kilometers to the south, in the forty-first precinct's relay booth, a small crowd has gathered around the new officer, Jules <laughs> Oldboy Cavier, around a dozen cops. The small room is filled with cigarette smoke, a buzz with laughter when Officer Judith Minow enters. Her left arm is in bandages, and her hair trimmed short. What is going on here? Did something happen? What happened is my partner made contact. It's not good. He's lost his badge and his side arm. You don't know that? He's confused, delirious even. <coughs> Matt, the torso Torsen, is finger fucking his fist, laughing <laughs> hoarsely and apparently telling some dirty story to his partner, Chester McLean, near the entrance. Yeah, Mullen was fucked, all right. Sounded fucking drunk to me. Yeah, that's right. That was some gnarly shit there. Enough! None of this is funny. Fucking sad. That's what it is. He's a cop. One of us can stand this. We must help him. Man, everyone, yeah. everyone here is French and we're Australian. Get him off the drink. Go jogging with him in the morning and get him on car juice. He's a lost man. I just know we can't give up on him when he's at his weakest. 
He wouldn't. The crowd in the room has started fidgeting uncomfortably. Someone's trying to slip out unnoticed. Mac, man the door. You know what he told me? I don't want to get better. I want to get worse. Those were his words. What did he I say that? He sighs heavily and turns no, to address the room. Before we started the game. He does not leave this room. Not a word of this to the captain. Or anyone else. We'll give him a couple of days to pull his shit together. I guess I can hold on to my talk for a few days. Good. Okay, everybody. Nothing but a prank call here. We all got our laughs. Now get back to work. Far north, on the other side of the motorway, the officer quietly hunches with his hand in the motor carriage. Ah. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> Oh fuck, Sylvie, right. Inside, you see a set of steering <laughs> This is precinct fifty-seven. How may I assist? I need to tell me the civilian, Sylvie. She may report a murder. Of course. What is the number, officer? Oh, fuck. Yes, hold on. Her number is O five one nine four four two nine eight. Received. Hold on, officer. It bothers me more than it should that these cops in this game don't use a phonetic alphabet for radio communication. <laughs> Lieutenant Itzaragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles from she's here, a million... away from here. Yeah, okay. Actually, uh... it's an intentional thing that sometimes this character doesn't use article articles. Mm. I, I don't know if we've met before. This is the police. I asked some questions about your last days at work. All right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You can hear resentment in her tone. She's not thrilled to be talking to you again. Uh... Was it you who called the police? No, not me. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. Co copper thieves? Yeah. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Okay, okay fuck it. Next question. Yeah, go on. Why'd you quit? That is a good question. That's just, that's kind of odd. I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Okay, okay. Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. Okay, thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Is this an internal thought or an external thought? It's There's no internal. quotes on it. Yeah, there's no quotes on it. Yeah, that's internal. Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Red when she was still working. I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the steward thing happened. It just made me want to quit. What Skua thing? Wait, what the fuck's Skua? <laughs> I don't know. I do. Oh, that thing. I threw it against the wall while screaming, Fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been... Giving you shit ever since you got there. That sounds like me. <laughs> Bitch bird got what I was talking <laughs> Why do I always end up screwing everything up? It was a pretty bird. There since I started working in Whirly. I really like her. We call her Scotty. There's genuine sadness in her voice. Okay, right. Thanks. Take care. You hear a sigh of relief. 
on the other end of the radio. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Yeah, no, I'm done. Seven, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of... Uh, All right, well, my life's a mess. Yep. Welcome to this game. <laughs> Sweet. Half of the fun is discovering how far and uh, how deep does the pit of your life go. <laughs> Just how far the rabbit hole goes. The street sign reads, fuck the police. Fine. Pigs go home, the street name is illegible. Cool. Well, let's try to get in the backyard, I guess. Rue de Son Gislaine, 8B. I think it's Gislaine. No, it's Gislaine. Is it? Okay. Yep. You could pick them up if you had a bag. No, oh, right. I should turn up the audio a little bit. Also, check the, um, uh, the fence. Not that, but probably, probably one lower than that. There we go. That's better. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Huh. We can try it. No. These no. tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. Let me give you a hint. Uh, it wouldn't have mattered on this occasion, but on other occasions, you might want to check the other options before going for a white check uh, because you might they, learn they can increase stuff okay. yes your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover cop habit you look at everything this isn't case related you think This game kind of reminds me of uh, Mystery of the Druids. Where, like, one of the whole points... Wow. Uh, Smells like spoiled meat and curdled dairy. A human being decomposes. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen <clears throat> and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Okay. This kid's ladder is rickety but still climbable. The ladder's for kids. It wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. Someone is trying to grow herbs in this greenhouse. Yeah, Q, no, fuck him up! Kuno, got this? The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, <laughs> he's almost exquisite. In his ugliness, like a gremlin, like a goblin. What? Yeah, yeah the other Napa kid behind Kimpy. the fence. Fucking, fucking fins. Yeah, fucking. A moment of your time, please. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. Fucking that Irish. Sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Electrochemistry is your is the pleasure center of your brain, and it most reactly, most strongly react reacts to alcohol, narcotics, and sex. Right. What do I want to do to this kid? <laughs> Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kids on drugs. Yeah, Kuno, ride the lightning, Kuno. Kuno's what I was gonna see. He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener.
Look, little fucker, I have questions for you. All right, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. <sighs> okay, you motherfuckers often play in this yard? Right, Pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo choo. What do you want with it? You were fucking climb the tree? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. So you'd say that ladder's unclimbable? Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant, lieutenant. takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! I'm gonna, I'm gonna slap somebody if I hear the word Kuno one more time. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Opagite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Opagites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. The fuck is an Eri Opagite? You mean the young woman by Whirling and Raz, the gardener? Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. He looks you in the eye. <laughs> I'm out of questions it's not later. Clear. In case it's not clear by this point, this is not our reality. No, I know. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. What do you know about the tr body? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. Camera, help me here. What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. Do you know who he was? Kuno <coughs> uses the fucking for target practice. You know how I got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Where'd you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around I trying to come up with something. I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno is in fucking Night City. Alright, so you're from fucking Cyberpunk, got it. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name <laughs> of the city in some pulp science fiction novel. <laughs> okay, fuck it. About the dead body. Kuno didn't smoke him, if that's what you mean. Have you seen any suspicious- anyone suspicious? <clears throat> full of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! Excuse me? Right now, let's talk about something else. Patience here. Is she one of you? Yeah. Listen here, kid. <laughs> Who the fuck's Kuno? <laughs> the boy points to his chest with both thumbs. So you refer to yourself in the third person. The fuck are you calling the third person? Kuno's the fucking first person? That's slightly confused. That's perhaps the perhaps best response I have ever heard to that question. Right, he's getting distracted. You hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fizzle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing thing. shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Just answer the fucking questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Take the name, Kuno! Somebody, please! It's full blast now. The wind carries the message far and wide across Martinez. Who put you up to this? No one. Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. This is where Kuno establishes dominance. Over you. Help! The pig's stabbing him! Kuno can't speak! Someone put you up to this. You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Shut the fuck up, Kim. I'm asking witnesses. What the fuck are you doing? Listen to your friend. <sighs> the phlegm is yellowish and bubbling somehow. Did Dart put you up to this? Kuno owns the fat ass. Are you high? Help! Mister's help! 
He prances around, eyes bulging out of their sockets, rolling hard, yelling at the windows. He's having the time of his life. Total ecstasy. Fuck the pimp. He's flashing Kuno. He's showing his genitals. If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late. Ah, uh, I'm tired of this shit. I want to punch him, but I'm not going to be able to. <laughs> yeah. Look. Kuno whispers I know even. You wanted to hit me. You got that? I'm going to fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. How do you know that you can see in my... Can you read my mind, Kuno? <laughs> yeah, that was a fantasy. I know what you thought. I'm going to fuck that Kuno up. I'm going to shut that shit down. You know what? You, you're nothing. Get a joke to Kuno. Kuno laughs. It's just you. lucky I don't have my John. Kuno! <laughs> Backing up was a bad idea. Now he thinks he's established dominance over you. Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch. You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno. No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever. A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. I was about to ask that. Thank you. Nice peepo. You don't talk to me about my fucking peepo. Yeah, cool. Well, that was a lot of that. That was that was a, a very um. That was a load of shit. Yeah. There are several footprints in the mud, left by productive. Lives. That was the word I was looking Anywhere for. from six to twelve pairs. <coughs> Got Every boots. worker's boots with reinforced toes and hobnails, all over the yard. Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? <sighs> Maybe more than twelve. No, eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Oh. One standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number forty-six. Get your notebook, Two, Sam. Standard work boot. What? Steel reinforced no, toes, I'm joking. Number <laughs> so are you are you serious here? Three, hobnailed work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 43. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Which is it? You don't know. It's a miracle you can tell the prints apart as it is. The cold must have preserved it. Okay. Five, another standard work boot, steel reinforced toes, number 44. Six, an aberration. Light as air, even pace, same make of boot, but number 41. Male or female? Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. I'm pretty good at this, ain't I? You're not bad. It's as if the whole <laughs> world darkens. Everything acts <laughs> as a thin film of unimportance on it, and the tracks burn in the middle of it in a strange, beautiful way. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot, number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Eight, and yet another standard work boot, number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother, more worn. How many? Four hundred million. For eight. I was pretty off then. I can't hit twenty. Same guys going back and forth. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Light step number forty-one. <coughs> shoe. A woman or a kid? I don't think there's a way to be sure. Understood. Anything Heavy else? one, 200 kilogram imprint. 200? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built, soon to be dead man. Hmm? Huh? He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Could be an extremely obese for Earth. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, th I'm thinking I some of them was carrying one him. One of them carried him over. Yeah. And one aberration, soul smoother than the other. Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. 
Give in edges. Some minor operating workbench with a pedal. Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer. He regrets it the moment he says it. Just not. So one of the so one. We are not looking for a drummer. We are looking for a group of dock workers. Perhaps it could be a driver. The driver would wear out their right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Hmm. Yes, prudent. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant writes the information down in his notebook, then reverts to the tracks in the mud. How old is it? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided yeah. to by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. I don't know. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashot. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve <coughs> the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What has it happened? What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here and looked at the tree. All right. I think I got a steel point. You did. So you can level up one of these skills. And uh, if... So I know you failed a um, a white check somewhere. Yeah, it was the uh, tr it was the the, the I think it was, was it perception or it was perception. Yeah. No, if it's the uh, if it's the fence, it's visual calculus. No, it was perception. No, no, it was actually visual calculus because it was reconstructing the 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 thing that happened. That was it. I thought it was perception because yeah. it was in yellow. Well, go back, yeah, but but the actual white you, check you, was, you noticed was... it. Yeah, you notice it because ah, okay. because of well, well, don't 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 do it yet. Just like go back down and just make sure. Look, yeah, I, yeah, don't yeah. Even, I don't even have to. Also, this is kind of gaming the system. What would I just as a person want to increase? Exactly. No, sure, sure. I'm just saying, if you wanted, <laughs> I'm just saying, if you wanted to take another shot at that white. Look, I need skill to be more check. of a cop, so I'm gonna do a spirit decor. Okay. And then you just exit out of the, there. You go. Okay. I was just saying, if you wanted to take another shot at that white <laughs> skill check, magnesium. I don't know what I can take in this game. I mean, you could take anything out of a box. That seems like stealing. You're a cop. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I'm a good cop. Pile of Are you? Material. Yeah. Right. I'm he, a good cop, not be... a good person. He can be a good... <laughs> okay, very fair, fair enough. That is a distinction. <laughs> that is a... Yeah, fair enough. It's it's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old chap. Sure about that? Because it's nice and orderly. Well-laid pallet. Okay. No, there's more to this. You get this strange feeling. What Hard feeling? to say. It's gone now. Fuck. Nice. <sighs> well, I guess we could try and get this thing down. Looking right. How the fuck do I get him down? The climb up the thing. I can't. Oh, never mind then. Let's get out of here. Let's scram. Uh. Letter R wears a crown. On the ribbon below, a light above descending. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid 
as a padlock that says, whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. <laughs> Why am I looking at you, trash container? <laughs> You're just a crap trash container. Yes? I think you should know that I can't remember anything. No response. He just arches his brow. Really? Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice. Like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. Yeah, but I'm literally, like, insane right now, man. Fine. We should get through this day first. Off hours begin at 9 p.m. If you're still having trouble then, I can give you an orientation. Good enough. Okay. Focus on other people's troubles, not your own. That is a relief. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at the sports watch on his wrist. What, about what the do you want to know? If we're in different prisons, why are we on the same chase? I'm afraid you and I are pawns in a, a pissing competition. Sweet. His That's nice. Is clear. This man would not use such an expression otherwise. You don't know? I assumed you were in on it. You know what I'm in on. Pressure grand amnesia. <laughs> Better still than an imbecile couple. Yeah. It's just stupidity. We shouldn't waste any more time on it. If you want my take, ask me after we've inspected the victim. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to know about the case? <sighs> How the fuck do I get the body down? Take Don't worry about look it. At him. What? Take another look at him. Hmm. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. I mean, there's that first option. Active decay. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. Oh, there's that little shit over there. Yeah. Maybe that's what I smell. <laughs> He's about to blow! Cops gonna blow, Kino! I cannot throw up in front of these two. <laughs> Uh, can you look at the rope sp itself, or is it part of him? It's part of him. Okay. There, he's yeah, still it's it. part of him. Uh. Well, we do have one lead. We've got the 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 idiots or the you know the dock workers or whatever. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza. That was visual calculus, actually. I was just curious. <clears throat> uh... Alright, so we don't know who the fuck called. This is a preliminary inspection. You just need to suppress the urge to throw up and approach it. So basically, we're just going to have to throw up. Or we find something to cover our mouth with. Maybe. But, but what? Sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary eyed with joy. It's almost touching our syrup. No, oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust for sweet syrupy rum and lemon? Yeah, fuck off. I'm busy. It's work time. <laughs> I 
Darn, I need the key to the ba batch. Can I help you? What thing? Oh, no. By the way, you should come back to this thing based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. What? So, if you want to ask him about the keys to that trash container, is that what you were going to ask? Yeah. You need to have looked at that first option and it was like, why am I looking at you, trash container? God damn it. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll keep hands off, but there are some times where you you need to click uh, certain things to trigger certain other things. The question is also, do I want to look for um, look in the trash while that little shithead is there? I'll yeah. just tell you now, in the interest of saving you time, Inside, that you that little shithead is literally always there. Pull out toolbox and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, Peter. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protecting your my tools like some men are. He's clearly. A little protective of his <laughs> Work is work. Take the chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, though the cutters in your hand. The pull out toolbox slides back into Cooper's Kanema. Quick, beat the child. <laughs> now I'm trying to I, I'll cut down the body if I can. There he still is. There he still is. And there he shall stay. Oh, fuck it, I'm not... This is the logo of the municipality of Repishol. Is... The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of death. The lieutenant leans in to inspect the lock. Oh, you're the lock over. We could try using a pry bar. There's one in my motor carriage, or... Or? or we could ask for a key from the manager of the whirling in rack. He probably... Yeah, okay, that's how we do it. Trash and arrow bag yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the whirling in rags. Well, yeah, dipshit. Thank you for clearing that up. <laughs> why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous. Doesn't it? Something stirs in me. No, it doesn't. Nothing stirs in me, and it isn't callous. It's common sense. Uh. Okay, then. Maybe you're callous yourself. <laughs> what do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to be a decent fucking cop. Isn't that goddamn hard? 
It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it very much is. It, it really is. This trash container with a well quick use vital strike on the child pops open. <laughs> it should now be <laughs> simply rape. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. What? Very yeah, well, but you won't like it. Sweat forms on your open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. Nice. We're just in time. This hasn't been emptied for the week. Look under the box of the cartons. You see milk and egg rest with one broken egg in it. Some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. A box falls into pieces in your hands. Batiste Sole cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below. And turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Here, look at the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eye. Yeah, he doesn't have pants on. As the legs of the slime-covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes? Cadaveric odor is faint. It did belong to the deceased. They were removed when he was still in the early stages of decay. Drop them in here, officer. The lieutenant produces a black. <laughs> Sorry, I read it quickly. He wore them with a belt, too. A white belt. The loops appear stretched, but... The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Oh. A drab, long-sleeved shirt, olive-colored, appears from the food waste, dripping with pus. This is a military type overgarment. No label or serial number. This is the kind of red knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. A yellow old mug that catches your eye. But other than that... All right. We should go to Garth again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the hosted cleaning the yard. Or that one. I'd advise against <laughs> confronting that force. Okay. The lieutenant nods. Then looks back into the trash container. The mug, I'm getting that mug too. <laughs> That's a sound for it. That's one thing of the list. I think. <sighs> All right. Well, we found some evidence. This game is just depressing. <laughs> I oh, know. you have no idea. But the plus side is it relieves my real uh, real life stress. <laughs> I can't focus on the stress of moving when I'm focusing on the stress of my life collapsing in before my eyes. <laughs> Can I help you? Here's your key. Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. Found the clothes. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. That's an awkward thing for you to say. Who else has keys to it? The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you, anyway. Someone on your staff will put them there? Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my staff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. Okay. Yes? <laughs> By the way, I'm going to sing karaoke here. Now, how do we get the fucking body down? Do you want me to just tell you what your next step is? Yes. You have to pass that skill check. Or fail it, actually. You just yeah. have to do it. 
That's that's what I was saying. You're you're just gonna have to vomit. God damn it. Unless you are, of course, extremely lucky. Unless you are extremely lucky. If you roll double sixes, you will pass. Yeah. Double sixes always pass. But that is uh what is it? The three percent chance it said? It is a three percent chance. Great, I gotta throw up in front of Cunt and pee, pee or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> I hate these kids. I like that. I yeah, like that. He still is looking right through me with his white eyes. The body below is in. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected, more fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Oh, I'll be I'll be back. Okay. okay. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a to be perfectly honest, lies under your feet and your throat stings from the. I mean, to, acid. To, to, be, to be to be perfectly honest, uh, all you seem to have had in your stomach was booze anyway. So Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Yeah, thanks. The hangover is clearly making things worse for you. We could use some ammonia to clear your head. Where did I get some? There is Fritz nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. They don't... There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rag. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Okay. Okay. No, the the um uh like the the lady at, out front. Oh. Yeah, the gardener. Just yeah, should I put his tools back? Well, you might need them for now. Oh, excuse me. Is this the gardener right here? I think so. Well, I mean, we could probably. In Martinez. What can I help you with? Ask some questions. Of course. What can I help you with? My partner's only about you may have ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. Perfect. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Okay. Of course. I won't hold you back. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with after all. Can I borrow your gloves? Sure. Keep them. I have another pair. Oh, well, that's that's nice. That was the nicest person we've encountered. Yeah, <laughs> just just a gardener. That dapper-looking drug addict in the bottom left is me. I know. <laughs> yeah, what, what did you did that just suddenly occur to you? The the fucking the smug corpse. <laughs> no, Chance was asking. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see that. It is an expression of pain. You need then to take the ammonia. Is looking right. Or, or did you? Or... How do I take it? Oh, you need to put it around your neck. I think. Oh no, it goes in your hands, maybe. Maybe, maybe it does go on your neck. Okay. Why, why, why is the, your shirt going? To, I don't, okay. Maybe it, well, let me see here. So it says, 
Well, can you combine it with the neck with the the handkerchief, maybe? Oh, maybe. Okay, no. That's a good idea, but. I guess I guess to be I guess to be perfectly fair, it also probably would have just like <laughs> would have fucking smothered yourself. All right, so thing glass to use treating fanning spells produce. I mean, I guess you have I guess you have it on you because it let you try again. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The uh, body below is in touch. Yeah, you have plus one for ammonia. But the ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces wow. tears out of your duck. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, uh, it with tears. How do I have anything left in my stomach? Jesus. I don't think I want to be a cop anymore. The ammonia didn't help at all. Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> the weight is reassuring. Like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong <laughs> men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough old trail. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Um. Uh. I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate, throw up, initial autopsy, throw up, baguette. Then drive to the uh, that's fair. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. <laughs> and the helps too. Um. Uh, do it without me. I can't keep it down. I, I literally can't. Yeah. No. This is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. You need to get your shit together. <sighs> okay. To go to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Okay. Volume uh, volumetric shit, shit compressor. <laughs> Thirty minutes. Let's get our shit together. Your shit is apart, and it's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that together, compressed in a small area. To achieve that, to achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for thirty minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that'll help. Yikes. Okay, hold on. I have a, I have an idea. First off, let's put his Inside, chain cutter back. Steering levers, a radio microphone, a metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. Oh, I can't put the it back. Inside, are neatly organized. Yeah, you, I think you just have them. Slides back into the I want to give it back. Gauge, cast a warm glow. I mean, honestly, you could probably just give it back at the end of the day or something. There's so a person over there, I want to check with the neighbors who are right next here. An old call box with oh, that is I didn't realize what the hell that was. All the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Okay, this is not helpful.
check if this fine person knows anything. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Yeah, I like a traveler. Oh. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. It's the jam, my man. Uh, yeah. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Scabs agitating. All around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. I like this guy. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Extravagantly phrase, but I can roll with it. Yeah. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. You've been here a week? Behind the love, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? He's been here a week. Do you know about the dead man, the one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. I've been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. All right. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. What's going on with the strike? It's like... Whatever's going on over at the docks, workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the Wild Island. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. What is it the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. <laughs> Anything else I should oh, know? I, I like Anything Tommy. Else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Camioners. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame him, really. Oh, yeah. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He tries his best to look nonchalant, but there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. What do I see in his eyes? It's worth a shot. In his eyes, hey! a familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. How? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. It's in the southwest. Excuse me. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Hell, I get longing. I felt something similar since I woke up. Man. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? No, we're not good at anything in this game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me, our life's shit. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way. Waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora? The aura of the seven seas. It's on the other end of Le Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. Can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. It's like I miss someone. What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. 
What about you, cop man? You missing someone? I'm missing me. This feeling? No, it's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow. And I miss my gun. I miss, I miss someone, someone, but I don't, I don't know, know who it is. is. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. But thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. And I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. All right. Don't be a stranger. Thank you, Tommy. You're like the nicest man I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, next to the gardener, you actually are an okay human being. Yeah, this fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> Tommy actually made me feel like a like a twinge of human emotion for a second. Our shit's still getting together. <laughs> Welcome to Ivashol. Wow, they typecast this man. <laughs> Holy shit. Racist lorry driver. Wow. Hey, I know Revachal, that's where we are. Don't you welcome to Revachal me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Every school of thought and government has failed in this city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. I'll let Jim take over here. Where did this? I'm confused. Oh, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Rivachol. Uh, it's a lorry driver thing. I know, but your name tag also says something. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here. That I should watch myself and behave. <laughs> Mom and dad are fighting. <laughs> I, I'm so confused. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCM. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. I, did I did I miss the something? Air between them becomes tense. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Fucking a. You do make a cute couple. You know that. Thanks. I'll peg you too. Thanks. <laughs> exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Whatever you say, officer. You could ask him to show you the soles of his boots. He definitely looks like someone capable of a lynching. <laughs> we're really typecasting this man. We're, but... we're really fucking like, we're zoning in on this guy. Let me see the soles of your boots. Been admiring the stompers, huh? Sure thing. Check them out. On the bottom of the man's boots, you see an intricate tangle of treads with no immediately discernible pattern. Not the ones I'm looking for. The man bites his lip and drops the near-finished cigarette lingering between his fingers. He reaches for a new one. We're done. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there was like a couple of like... Freeze. Sick. We were promised work. Oh god, I can't wait to fuck this up. Bastards! We have a right to work. Uh-huh. Looks like too much trouble for my taste. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. a lot of loose change on the ground, but I don't want to be a thief in this game. 
I pick up loose chains just on the ground. Yeah, but it's like next to people, and they're... I don't know, it feels weird in this case. <laughs> this isn't like finding a nickel in the parking lot. This is like a fuck ton of change right next to a dude who's standing there. The small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Excuse me? No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Grandma? Nothing. Her smile just keeps widening. Her hair oh, yeah. is gr Plus one physical instrument. The Horseback Monument. I am Felipe III, the squanderer, greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachau, son of Felipe II, the opulent, father of Felipe IV, the insane. Not a good track record of mental health in that family. What, who, what did this chain do? Who? Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, Old sumptuous Philip was known I'm for profligacy. Well, Hi. he blew through the whole national treasury, <laughs> starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Revachol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti centennial revolution. And How did he blow through the entire the national treasury? And the monarchy under Insulindian Isola. Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, <laughs> instead of a bed like a normal person. The man certainly knew how to live. Damn right. <laughs> Thank you, Necktie. There's no way that's true. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cousin. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't want to know. Philip III's ludicrous bronze likeness looks defiantly up in the sky. <laughs> By the way, we spoke to Tommy. He's the nicest man I've ever met. He is. I love Tommy. Shit together yet? Forty uh, percent. Oh no, volumetric <laughs> shit compression is ninety percent. Yeah, yeah. You just gotta talk to more people. All right, uh, let's go make a mistake. Let's go get our ass beat. What's going on? Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. Oh boy, this giant. The broad shoulder. With us. Beat the <laughs> down. Should I? <laughs> I, I, I'm so glad that every time Conley tries to speak, you immediately move on. Okay, I was thinking no. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking. 
cops and strike breakers together. I know this fucking voice actor. Builds confidence. I don't think I've chosen any sides. Might be time. Don't let the bad bastards tread on you. Who the cops fuck is tend this? To side with the higher ups, but you're essentially still workers. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand them. Right to work. Right to work. Yeah, Charles, what are we talking about? Rights of people, rights of workers, to have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. Okay, regardless, I ask her questions. Maybe you should ask them the questions, like, why we're not allowed to make a living here? Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, Scott. I'm just going to leave. Volumetric shit compressor. I have compressed my shit. Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not <laughs> more official. It remains to be seen how long the shit singularity lasts. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. All right, here we go. Let's try again. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is in front. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind oh, good. telling you to run. And your stomach you did it. Ring itself empty with your hands at your side. I've already puked twice. There's literally nothing else. <laughs> yeah, you can keep, keep puking. I start. Remember, I started this game with an the man before one you is naked, but for a pair of underpants. And I had to make like four attempts. <laughs> his skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity, a fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt he used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Mm. I can't find his name. Start the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. He's voiced by Mark McGuire. Yeah, I know. I couldn't, I, I can't find that guy either. Above the knee, the man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them, delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor, possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Oh, Fair sure. enough. Ceramic plates, zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the heel, fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. How about the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more on after seven days. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. Oh boy. Okay. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form, ageless and synthetic. The material is out of place here. It is. It's expensive. Okay. We've requested similar material for our tactical unit for years now. The constabulary has been a bit too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatic. 
How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Wow. For the northwest region of Revishol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rent. So <laughs> wait, my yearly pay is 5,500? As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. How the fuck would this guy have it? That's for us to find out. My I mean, he seems like he was a military man. Suggests he was a security guard for the Harbor Company. But this looks pretty good. advanced for security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Yeah. The sabatons dangle off the man's dick. The cadaver slowly the, the hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt. It's used for tying cargo under six-rotor airships. Don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. <laughs> airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. <laughs> Apparently this is the reinforced kind. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. Sure ever stay up there. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strain. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. I even get him up there. A noose is one of those things that's easy. I'm 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 getting fucking sick of tired of having my goddamn chest cavity rattle from across my goddamn yard. What? There's some idiot there's some idiot playing music outside at like forty billion decibels. Oh. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Okay. The cadaver hangs it's from the, an intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars, alcohol, and heartbreak. This is a map of the night sky? No. Microelectric system, maybe. I have only a cursed knowledge of the science of cybernetics. I would not know if it were. But it's not quite complex enough, is it? It doesn't seem familiar from the insides of any radio computer your mind can imagine. The somewhat organic lines remind you of old filament memory units, but not quite. No, you're nowhere near right. So am I. A sudden ringing sound fills the air as Lieutenant pulls down the zipper of his orange jacket. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A Trigat Sunshine. Mini. Okay. Trigat is the world's leading manufacturer of intercommunication devices, primarily projectors. The camera before you looks familiar somehow. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. He produces two metal capped ampoules and clicks them into place on the side of the apparatus. A thin slot shines there. I have only two ampoules, so... Nobody knows. I don't want to waste one. He points the camera at the corpse, peering into it. The lens needs adjusting. Then... Okay. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by oh. the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do you need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. 
By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Okay. I'll let... Kim seems to have his shit together more. I'll let him hold on to it. Here, rest of me. <laughs> oh, okay. Don't give up. He hands you the piece of rolled up photo paper. <laughs> Let's... The glossy eyed corpse looks by. His mouth mute and his skin as colorful... Look him in the eye. ...rainbow on the photo paper. Teeming with his eyes are milky white and blind to the world. Protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home. Just sub-aquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. Who are you, dead the death's man? death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Who are you, dead man? I'm gone. Oh. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I'm a joke. Look at me. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about jokes either. Who are you when you were alive? <laughs> oh, this is this is lizard brain. A motherfucker and a killer. I have another question. Go ahead, Kobo. What's what? happening? What do you mean? Never mind. Ask me more questions. <laughs> you fucking love questions. Where, Where have you gone? Come back no. later, Kobo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memen. As you narrow your eyes, <laughs> the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. <laughs> it's worth His noting. Lower extremities are pink with a yes. <laughs> His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. It's worth noting that this game has some glitch, some bugs in it where it will play the wrong sound file with the wrong bit of dialogue ah, text. Okay. Uh -huh. What 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 happened? Uh so last time so scroll up a little bit, Sam. Right there. The hangman here in the text you see it says, You can come back and look into this face anytime you want. Ask me your little questions, freshen your memory, oh, create right, associations. Right, right. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, that was not the line of dialogue that I, I kind of noticed spoken. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Twists on the cargo belt. So do we get him down? Covered in tech. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso <laughs> covered in tattoos. And I have something I need to know, corpse man. No, I have you done the preliminary. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strong material. Maybe we could shoot him down. No! We don't have a gun! <laughs> uh... You don't. That's true. No, yeah, but a gunshot around here? Let's not, while there's a whole, you know, strike going on over there. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> we don't need a peaceful protest in our hand. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Uh, Someone else? You mean, like, the police? Okay, fuck it, you have a point. Sadly, yes. The whole RCM is out there right now, doing the exact same thing we are. Are we in a rush to help them? Not with this gun. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern. It's all the branch. We need to get it climb up there and so the branch. There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. Ashraf from the harbor? I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be suspect in this case. It seems like a dangerous route to go down. Yeah, let's reconsider. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken 
on a skewer. I'm out of ideas. I'm having a little bit of them. Hmm. Of course. You have questions, don't you? Come back later, Coppo. Okay. Use yourself with my frank manner. Uh. My memento more you features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. Well, we've been going. Let's see here. I want to get him down. Yes, we do. We gotta ask the harbor. Okay. They do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... I can get him down, too. <sighs> okay. Let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. I mean, it is a good question. How do we get inside? They're, they're blocked everything okay. off. By negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's unlikely, though. Well, there is that there is that thing over there, that that uh, that, uh, that, 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 that uh, door in the wall over there to your right. Yes, there is. That might that might be there. That might be a way through. You know what, I'll do my visual calculus and run. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush. The tire tracks were left here by a ah, hey. lone event that took place some days ago. It's a message, written in the language of burnt rubber. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there, and then accelerated straight into the fence. Whatever next. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Before heading south, must have been in a hurry. A charger to the fence. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Somehow that makes you feel scared. Is this charge to the chase? Know. I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the roundabout. I would keep them separate. You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they live. You got it. Okay, let's try to get the pry bar. Uh, hold on, what do the gloves do again? Plus one interface. to interface. Alright, Jim, sorry about this. I gotta borrow more of your tools. The radio <laughs> Pull out tool. A metallic drawer slides out. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand. Useful for opening all sorts of doors. The pull out toolbox slides back. Now we'll use the pry bar to kill the kids. And kill <laughs> the kid. Hide him in the other dead body. What? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say dumpster. Destroy small child. An inconspicuous. Pile Destroy the child. The material. I can't get in this way. You can't. Nope. You uh, failed the the the, ch the skill check. You have yeah, to that's... level up perception yeah, again. Yeah, you have to level up perception again. Balls. <sighs> well, there's only one thing to do. I'm gonna die. Oh, you won't die. And if you do, it'll be a funny way to end the stream. <laughs> I mean, we could also. Let me see here. Past. 
says G R I H. <clears throat> if your encyclopedia was a little higher, it would say, oh, asks a man with jolly eyes tilting his head. I'm a, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop's cap. <laughs> Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> what brings the RCN here? To the wild north? That's the end of murder. Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. I'm sorry, this man has called me manana. <laughs> it's actually very fun in here. Oh, fuck, no it isn't. You want to help me solve by telling me? No, that's stupid too. This is, a, this is, look. I don't, I don't like any of these options. Look, Damala, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is an absurdist game, okay? Or number four, number four can be a smiling joke. Yeah. Of course, Policia. It wasn't me. You can rule me out. Easier that way. Should we? He's nice. <laughs> I don't like nice. Ah, volition. I didn't do it. It's the truth. I'm looking for assistance. Body still hanging in the tree? Hey, that's a rough pickle. Can't help you with that, sorry. I'm not really an admirer of dead bodies. Might be someone else from the Union killed under assistance. I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. The passage grants itself. That's simple. I just walk in. I walk right past Measurehead and go in. Measurehead? Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Walk right past him. Then press the button to unlock the door. Then go uh -huh. past him again. Uh -huh. And you enter the arbor through the office. It's that. For some reason, I don't think like it's gonna be that easy. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation, or you could oh boy, Semini Supremacist worldview, or hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Have any of the stabs tried to convert to his worldview? Jean Luc himself would say the philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Okay, got it. Sure. Has anyone ever bested him? Nice talk. Oh boy, an autosave. Yeah, right before I get destroyed by meat log over here. Meat log? What's that? In case I noticed. struck, press button behind guard. A hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. What's that? The Greater Revachol Industrial Measure Harbor. Measurehead crushes all. Hi. Body betrays your degeneracy. <laughs> Look, it's an expression of pain, okay? I'm, I'm concerned. I'm a superstar! Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. What? Don't say anything. Size him up first. Shut up, Authority. <laughs> My body's unimportant. I'm with the police. <sighs> this isn't gonna work. That is precise. I like the I like the fact that his entire speech is in all caps, like he's death from fucking Discworld. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Kim, is it really that bad? You're right. I'm an alcoholic. I need the dead body no longer be in the tree. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. What? The influence of the 
Amsondwish Reis is Wayne. What? That 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 is a that is a statement right there. Uh, is Ham Sandwich raised the police? No. But it is what you are, though. Look, if you're it. You want me to tell you what it is? No, look, <laughs> I'm with the police. I need you to comply. Joking motion. Signs of a late stage neurodegenerative disorder. How? What How the fuck? How far the Occidental Ablo Group has fallen? You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. All right. You dominated lesser cultures, right. like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. Right. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Sounds about right. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens a door to the harbor. This man is not budging. Let's hope his superiors inside are more cooperative. Oh, you're right. Just help me with the torps. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting <sighs> the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Simenan Islands and to Boogie Street, and we will Boogie Street. You. When you are gone, we will build a museum. The world I cannot will tell you. With bottles. I cannot tell you. Boogie Street. How much? I fucking fucking love the name Boogie Street. It's so fucking good. Wow. Wow. Uh, double ones on that. Holy shit. Jean-Luc Mejahed is a sage and an intellectual giant of race theory. Who are you, handmaiden of Al Ghul? I am a, I am a servant of the Demiurge, and you need to move. <laughs> you could try knocking him out. Fuck no. <laughs> right. Are generally not very good examples of their race. I. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid of my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. You're right. I, my race doesn't stand a chance. Correct. Aren't the Union... No. No. <laughs> How did this happen? Your little <laughs> fist is in his giant hand, and he's squeezing it. It hurts. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. I'm a cop, fucker. <laughs> it was then that you died. In your chest. <laughs> So I'm guessing this is bad. Very, very bad. This is Let it bad. go. There's no shame in surrendering now. We all do. <laughs> it's... Cops 
suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCA. <laughs> the is there he loved his looker, sure, but I think he. Had... <laughs> and that's it for today. We've had a fun time. Uh, that was Disco Elysium, a uh, shorter game than I imagined. Yeah, um, it was a really weird one. I, I, you know, I honestly, I don't understand what people are talking about this game. People are saying like it's like a thirty-hour game. I don't, I don't get it. You know. It like like you know it, this this game there's not a lot there really. So this is my uh, uh, well, let's this play. is my this is my um, uh, <laughs> submission to AGDQ or whatever the fuck that's um, <laughs> speedrunning. <laughs> Speedy games done quick. Yeah. Speedy games done quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Speedy's We're done. spelled with an A. We're done for now. <laughs> We're done for now. We're done. We're done.